think it's all the two sins, I think, or maybe, or whatever. And better than ginger snaps are lemon snaps, but you can't ever find lemon snaps. Now, speaking of Bill Scouts, they have a good looking cookie. Yeah. Yeah, they have one called uh, lemon coolers. They're kind of skinny. They were good, but you can't find those either. Everything I like, you can't seem to find. Yeah, that's like, that's me. I like to go to places like Big Lots and things like that where they get in all the stuff and yeah. it's unusual, mm -hmm. but you can't count on it. Well, and the they have is, it for two, three weeks and then it's like, gone. Yeah, you'll find a treasure <laughs> there, you know, something really good, and the next time they don't have it. That's so right. it's gone, and, and, and then you never see it again. Nope, every single soda I like is gone. Every single drink I like from Dollar General is gone. <laughs> you know I what I food. like is the, the, the ruby red uh, grapefruit cocktail, you know, it's the juice with mostly yeah. water in it. It's it's really tasty and it's only two or three bucks a bottle. Can't beat it. And it's better than soft drinks, you know. I used to go in there and get the, the blood orange soda. <laughs> soda water. Yeah, water. Flavored water. But that don't have those anymore either. Yeah, I'd say I, I, I am susceptible to orange crush on occasion. That's not one soft drink. I will, I will buy. I will buy the orange crush. And you know they got those big forty ounce bottles or whatever it is for a buck. So how can you go wrong? You know, a buck for forty ounces. Do you buy a Coca Cola? You buy a bottle of twenty ounce Coca Cola for two dollars and twenty five cents. Yes. And the vending machines are crazy, so. When they work. <laughs> yeah, we always buy the six packs or whatever was on the sale that week. Well, if I buy a six pack, I'll drink the whole thing in two days. I have no willpower. Okay, yeah, let's, let's grab a thing to write on. My hand's not working. Now what? 
Um, which European country produces more hydroelectricity per capita than any other in the world? Russia. Um, that's that's not with the cards. It's this, as of when these cards were printed, it could it could be wrong. So if you can find a credible source that agrees with you, I'll give you the point. But that's not what this card says. You, sir. What what uh, European country more hydroelectricity? Well, it's either Italy or Germany. I'll, I'll, I'll say uh, Italy. Uh, not Italy. Well, then I'll say Germany. Not Germany. <laughs> Norway. Norway. Yay! Yay! All right, you get a point. So. I think I could be a country with a lot of leaders. He does. Entertainment. For you, man. Who was too busy with Magnum P.I. to take the role of Indiana Jones? Correct. I couldn't hear Tom Selleck. Can you imagine Indiana with a All right, so um, let's see. Oh, uh, now for you, sir. Um, what did Clive Sinclair call the world's first pocket calculator launched in 1972? What, what, was that, what was the first one? What did Clive Sinclair call the world's first pocket Calculator launched in 1972. I, I didn't hear you said what was. Uh, Clive Sinclair. Clive Sinclair. What did he call the world's first pocket calculator in 1972? I don't have a clue. All right, you, ma'am. He called it a computer. Good guess, but that's not what the card says. Computer, but okay. it wasn't like. <laughs> For you, ma'am, what, 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 what did he call the world's first pocket calculator? I have no, no idea, so I'm going to say my best buddy. That is also a good guess, but no. Um, and for you, ma'am, what, what do you think he called the world's first pocket calculator? I'd say a pocket app. That's also a really good guess. Uh, that is also a really good guess, uh, but no. He called it the Sinclair Executive. Do the boys use to start a signal fire in Lord of the Flies? I think this is your choice, Mr. Hall. What do they use to start the fire? Oh, that's a good guess, but it's not right. And your guess, ma'am? So matches. Um, nope. Hidden's glasses. Correct. What, 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 what Hidden's glasses. Oh, oh okay. Yes. Like a magnifying glass. Okay. Yes, yes. And they stole his glasses. Yes. All right. He had to go out some of the pictures, though. Okay, that's fine. Um. Eyeglasses? Yes, yes. Eyeglasses. Yeah. Oh, okay. Vocal. Yes. The music for. So. All right. Ready to begin. All right. So next, uh, Mr. Hull is up next. What auto 
racing actor provided Doc Hudson's voice for the Pixar animated movie Cars. What auto racing actor provided Doc Hudson's voice for the Pixar animated movie Cars? Richard Petty. Um, that's a good guess, but it is not correct. Um, Correct. Who was it? Paul um, Newman. I started to say that, but it's all gone. You did that. So it was electronic advocates, wasn't it? It was not. But he wrote, <laughs> I mean, he, he wrote, that's kind of a tricky question because he raced cars at one time, but he was known as an actor. Well, it did say car racing actor. Oh, okay, okay. So. Uh, oh, I didn't hear the actor. I didn't even hear the question. Okay. <laughs> if, you, if you need me to, to repeat the question. I, did, I didn't put the words together. Okay. I think we're circling back around to you. And this one, this one is Lord of the Rings. So. Um, how does Treebeard describe Antwi? Willowy, leafy, or he can't remember. I said he can't remember. He can't remember. That's correct. Takes him so long to say anything. By the time he said it, you forget anyway. All right. And let's see. Uh. What uh, former White House resident began what? White House residence began her first daughter mystery series with double exposure? I think you're gonna get a shot at. <laughs> well done. All right. Okay, I lost track of the noun. Okay. Okay, so we're looking for the author? We are looking for the author of the first daughter mystery series who wrote Double Exposure. So we want the author. We want the author. She was in the White House. Yes. Jackie Kennedy. Good guess, but no. Or at least I think I know the answer, Liz Cheney. Uh, also no. She did write something. I, I, she did write something, but not this. <laughs> Um, I say it was uh, Roosevelt. That is a good guess, but it is not correct. <laughs> the answer is Susan Ford. Ford. All right. Now, um, What did the Romans consider to be their most important road? Who, who are you calling on? Oh, Mr. Hall. I think it's his turn. So, what did the Romans consider their most important road? Yes. Oh, happy Correct. Nice. We got one. Correct. Yes. All right. So. Of course, it could have been any of them, all of them, leave it around. That is true. That is true. Um, oh, I like this one. What color is the bottom strip on the flag of Egypt? White. Not correct. What? Correct. All right. We have we have a book here at the library about flags and how they got like 
how they got their design, which is very interesting. I would not have known that, however. Alright. So, let's see. Um, what Monty Python character liked to, quote, put on women's clothing and hang around in bars. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, John Hurt. Uh, he's, he's the actor, but what was the character? Long down together. <laughs> Gosh, I only remember the actor's names like Eric Idle. I don't know any of the characters offhand. Okay. All right. Well, the answer that this card gives is the lumberjack, and I have only a vague recollection of that scene, but hey. So, let's see. Um, what's the common term for precipitation? infused by sulfuric and nitric acids. The common term for precipitation, precipitation infused by sulfuric and nitric acids. Those terms. Um it's yours, yes. Acid rain. Correct. Yay. Acid rain. It has it has sulfuric and nitric acids in it. There you go. Um, <coughs> what nursery rhyme character was rich on Monday but broke on Sunday? The only one I know that goes from Monday to Sunday is Selma Grundy. Correct. <laughs> there may be a version where he's dead on Sunday. I don't know. What do members of Citizen Weather Observer Program learn from an aneroid barometer. Barometric principle. Correct. Um. Okay, so here we go. Um which cast member of Lord of the Rings is in the Guinness Record Book for the actor with the most film and TV screen appearances? I didn't see Lord of the Rings. I, I don't have any idea. All right. So Ian McClellan. Nope. Darn it, she stayed. <laughs> <laughs> Who's got four? I don't know. So I, I, somebody's got four. Wow. Somebody named Ian? No. Uh -oh. yeah. no. That's the wrong answer. But so, you somebody can't imagine this is the wrong answer. <laughs> oh, no. Somebody who had a lot of very traumatic life experiences. I'm going to write it on this paper. Who was it? Do you I have to? All right, Christopher Lee. <laughs> I'm going to cross it off. <laughs> Dracula himself was in it. He fought with Ian McClellan. Mm -hmm. That's cinema at its finest. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Um. What off 
author features Soviet detective Porfiry Petrovich Rosnikov in the colorful papers A Fine Red Rain and A Cold Red Sunrise. I get the question. Mm, nope. <laughs> it is a good guess, but not quite right. Uh, um, John Lefoy. Mm -hmm. John Grisham. Nope. Somebody's gonna get a VM. No, the answer is Stuart Kaminsky. What well, Kaminsky? There's the answer there. <laughs> almost, almost. We're getting warmer. All right. Uh, let's see. Should pick it up. Should be. Yeah. Year was the first beer brewed in America? Um, no. And I'm gonna I'm gonna go ahead and say the card has an answer. I don't think the card's answer is precisely accurate. It's an approximation. Uh, so if you just take a wild guess, I would say 1166. All right, that's a good guess. But well, I always thought the Egyptians invented beer, so, you know, 1500 BC or something. All right, well, that's a good yeah, guess. The exact thing. <laughs> <laughs> I would think just letting wheat and letting grass ferment and drinking what happens all the way back to 7000 BC. Just going to start. All right, all right, so you're going 7000 BC? Um, 908. 908. That's very specific. All right. The car says 6,000 BC. I'm going to give it to you as the closest. Yay! Because I don't believe that this is an accurate and exact year. It's So I'm, I'm going to give the closest. I'm going to give the closest points for that one. All right. This is a little bit of outdated information. <laughs> That's the problem with using older cards. Sometimes. That might be better for this group. <laughs> All right. Uh, uh, um, what? Uh, this, this one should not have changed. Um, what river forms the border between Thailand and Laos? Mm. That's a good the only guess. river I know over there is Mekong. Correct. Yay! Mekong. There you go. Number two. You are? Okay. Oh, you keep mine if you like. Sir, or something, you know, he was knighted. Um, Forrest. 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 Forr
<laughs> I can I have a picture of them in my mind, but I don't I don't think it's the person you're thinking of. I I think I think it's somebody else. Okay, well then okay. Then it would be Daniel Day Lewis probably. Um Nope. Anybody else have a guess? Well, uh, that guy that always wins the Academy Awards, every time he makes a movie, he's made the link of him. Yeah. Who, who is it? Daniel Day Lewis. Well, now this, this is, this is as of, this was in 2006. That's what the two So, all right. Anthony Hopkins. It's not Anthony Hopkins. Oh, he, he made that movie. Crazy, the New York Yeah, I yeah, I think you're still thinking of Daniel Day Lewis, but the answer the answer is Jack Nicholson. Who? Okay. Jack Nicholson. Jack Nicholson. I think you're the closest. <laughs> All right, we're we're just getting wild in here. And I I have fully forgotten whose turn it is. Sorry, she said Hugh Jackman, so I think it's your turn. Okay, All right. Well, she hasn't said it yet. Okay. What is the hardest bone in the human body? The skull. Oh, uh, that's a good guess. That's not what this says. Yes. Okay. The hardest bone in the human body is the shin, the pillow. Uh, no. Nope. According to this card, if y'all can find a credible source saying otherwise, I'll give you the point. But what do you think? I think it's a platform. No. This says jawbone. Jawbone. So I don't know. I've never broken my jawbone. Anybody who's broken their jawbone can feel free to weigh them. Well, I know it's worse ones that keep getting hit on the jaw when they survive it. Yeah. Never had a broken jaw. It's the chewing, so I guess it would have the most pressure put on it. Fine thing to think of now. <laughs> All right. What nationality is a girl who was rescued by Phileas Fogg in Around the World in 80 Days? Uh, yes, yes, because she didn't get job out of yeah, back India. Here. Yes, she's Indian. All correct. right. There's three. All right. Knocking it out of the park. <clears throat> what decade witnessed figure skater Ronnie Robertson complete the first triple fall chow Fall cow jump. I don't know what that is, so I don't know. The 1970s. That is not correct. What, what was the question again? What decade? Oh. Yes. Was figure skater Ronnie Robertson complete the first triple fall chow? I think I'm pronouncing right. Jump. Okay. Well, I'll guess. I'm going to say the 60s because I don't know. All right. That is not correct. Well, I'm going to say the 50s. Cause. Correct. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I like the ones where we pick from a category. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, next time you want, want to try multiple choices. <laughs> no, we're just, we are just uh, playing chaos with <laughs> because this is my first time leading a trivia tournament. All right. What? Color blood runs through the veins of the Urukai and the Orcs. The who? The Urukai and the Orcs in Lord of the Rings. Oh. <coughs> Color blood. <coughs> uh, purple. Good guess, but no. Green. Also good like guess. The rest of them. <laughs> it would be interesting if it was green, but no. Nope. Red. No. Nope. <laughs> it is blue. 
black. Okay. Y'all remember all that oozing black blood. Good times. Good times. <laughs> London Literary Society in Cakes and Ale, the tale of two writers researching a biography of the fictitious Edward Driffield. Could you repeat the question? I'm not sure I could. All right. <laughs> who, who is the author of the book Cakes and Ale? Uh, which is a, a satire of London Literary Society about two writers researching a biography of the fictitious Edward Driffield. I'm also going to go with Edward. Edward Lickin. Uh, no. Jonathan Swift. No. Those are good guesses. Um, Somerset Mall. I also would not have known that. All right. Oh, another flag one. What year did the red maple leaf design officially become Canada's flag? What year? Yeah, what year? 1972. That is a good guess, but not right. Oh, are we going to be closest to? You know what? Sure, we can do closest. That's <laughs> what I was thinking. So, 1973. Nope. 1932. Nope. 1964. Nope, but I'm giving it to you as closest. It was 65. Also about the Canadian flag. I'm not going to be <laughs> two Canadian flag questions in a row. Uh, where were 30,000 British citizens living when it became a special administrative region of China in 1997? Where were 30,000 British citizens living when it became a special administrative region of China in 1997? Where were they living in China? Yes. China. Well, where in China? <laughs> Hong Kong? Oh, right. Oh, cool. Oh, that's cool. All right. Next, next time we're going to do, next time we should do a program, tell us about the interesting places you visited. Mm -hmm. Resulted in Jodie Foster having to replace her in Panic Room. What injury? What movie? Oh, what movie? I'm sorry. What movie was Nicole Kidman filming when she injured her knee and therefore could not appear in Panic Room? Bruce Curtis. It's mine, but it's yours. <laughs> <laughs> I can't I even know, remember. Is that what? Mean? She hurt her knee in a movie. Yeah, yeah wasn't able to be in Panic Room after that. So, okay, um, the,
know the movie, then I think it is. But. Are you are you trying to say far and away? That's a good guess, but it's not accurate. That's why I should. Uh, no. Uh, the Virginia Woolf movie. Uh, no. The answer is Moulin Rouge. What? Moulin Rouge. All right. Um. All right, so it's your turn. What flowed through an ancient Egyptian clepsydra to tell the time? It's water, and it's like this bowl with two holes in it. Correct. <coughs> um, How do you tell the time with the, the bowl with two holes? Oh, it's got, you put the water in it, and the bowl has these lines. And as the water comes out, it takes so long. Oh, like a sand glass. Oh, that's interesting. Okay. Um, what is the alternative name for the Mona Lisa? There's no one. And I've seen the Mona Lisa. I have no idea, so I'm going to say uh, it, it, it's her name. Mm. Smiling one. The girl with the smile or the girl with the secret smile? No. That's what I was going to say. Well, I mean, those might be other names for them. They're not what the card says. The card says La Gioconda, which I may be mispronouncing because I do not speak Italian. It says what? La Gioconda, which I may be mispronouncing because I do not speak Italian. Yeah, that's the problem. <laughs> I mean, the problem is it's another language. Yeah, it should be Italian for smi smiling woman. <laughs> <laughs> that's what I was going to say. Is that what it means? No. Okay. I, I don't know. Because uh, I don't speak Italian, and I don't have any, I don't have a device in front of me to look it up. All right. Oh, this is a good one. And I think we are back to you. All right. Who was the first Boy Scout to become a U.S. president? Roosevelt. Mm, good guess, but no. He did all that stuff, but he didn't have a license to do that stuff. <laughs> I don't know. Let's see. Uh... Harry Truman. Uh, good guess, but no. Gerald Ford. Also good guess, but no. Eisenhower. No? Kennedy. Okay, yeah, I was going to guess this later. Prevents Eowyn from running to Theoden as Gandalf exorcises him. Who prevents him? Who? And who is exorcising him? Gandalf. Gandalf. Who prevents Eowyn from running to Theoden as Gandalf exorcises him? Arwen. Uh, nope. Um, Gandalf. Nope. I just made that up. All right, Aragorn. <laughs> 
Ann Tyler Opus sees Ezra Tull open an eatery that serves what clients have a hankering for and not necessarily what they order. Well, um, what what is the name of the, the novel in which the character does that? The novel by Ann Tyler. Oh. Set in Baltimore. Doesn't narrow it down. All Ann Tyler books are set in Baltimore. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, maybe. The, the, the Good Time Restaurant is something like the, ha the Good Happy, the Happy Good. Uh, I can't think of the name of it. Uh, the one I'm thinking of, I don't know which one it is. Dinner at the Homesick Restaurant. What? Dinner at the Homesick Restaurant is the name of the book. Alright. Um, let's see. So now. Oh, okay, so we're back to you. Um, was the practical purpose of the Pharaohs of Alexandria, one of the seven wonders of the ancient world? Practical purpose of the Pharaohs? The Pharaohs of Alexandria, which is it's a physical structure in Alexandria. It's one of the seven wonders of the ancient world, but it also has a practical purpose. What is it? Could you spell? P-H-A-R-O-S. Um, correct. Yay! <laughs> Is that the same thing as the Colossus of Rhodes? No. No, that's a, that's a different thing. Um, it'd be a good spot for a lighthouse, though. <coughs> <coughs> Which island off the coast of Africa introduced bananas to Jamaica in the 16th century? It did the what to Jamaica? Introduced bananas. Who's, who's turn this Introduced bananas. Oh, yes, Mr. Hall, yes. So we know the bananas <laughs> grow in Jamaica, but where did they come from? That's what um, the song is. Canary Islands. Correct. <laughs> All right. So we all I can think of in the Atlantic. <laughs> Maybe canaries are yellow, bananas are yellow. But so. the name of this dog. Are they yellow dogs too? I guess golden yeah. retrievers. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Full circle. <laughs> all right. Uh <clears throat> What is Miss Piggy's surname? The Frog. Legally. <laughs> they had three marriages. At least one of them has to be Karen. <laughs> well, but she, you don't know that she took her husband's name. She could have kept her own name. No, no. She has his name for legal purposes, so she gets his money. Her stage name's just Piggy. Okay. All right. Sure. That's, that's a good answer. <laughs> I think I'm going to give it to you if nobody else gets it. <laughs> you know Miss Piggy's canon surname? Her maiden name. Piglet. Piglet, no. All. <laughs> I didn't hear the question. Miss Piggy of the Muppets. What is, her name is, what is her last name? Piggy what? Oh, I, I didn't watch the Muppets. Smith Anderson. Lee! Piggy! Piggy! I love that! <laughs> I love Piggy Lee! My life is so much better. <laughs> but I, I will, I, you know, I will accept the frog as an acceptable alternative answer because 
Because, sure, let's go with it. All right. What Indian plant did medieval explorers report for tiny lambs on the ends of its branches? I'm sorry, I forget whose turn it is. Lambs? Oh, yes. L A M B S? Yes. And I'll be there. No. Your name's Tony. That, say, say it again. What Indian plant did medieval explorers. Medieval what? Explorers. Explorer, okay. Report more. Tiny lambs on the ends of its branches. Tiny lambs on the end of its branches. And you want the name of the explorer? No, I want the name of the plant. The name of the plant. It's an Indian plant. A plant with tiny lambs on the end of the branches. Okay, well. You uh, got the job. <laughs> I guess that would be the. Uh, that would be the sheep tree, that's what it's a sheep tree. Mm -hmm. It is not the sheep tree. Oh, no, the sheep tree. I don't know where baby's breath comes from, but let's go with that. It is not baby's breath. What is the fluffiest plant you can think of? Oh no, yeah, go ahead. Uh -huh. Don't spoil it. Everyone can guess. Cotton? Cotton! Cotton! Yes! I thought cotton was was uh, native to Guatemala or some or some place in Mexico. What's it do? Is that what you were gonna say? Grown in India. And no, it's yeah. from India. That's why they have the glorious Right? I mean maybe I read the, maybe what I read was wrong. Maybe, maybe different varieties come from different places. Yeah, I guess so. Yeah, cotton comes from India. That's why you get such glorious Indian cotton. Anyway, um, so, okay, so she got caught, and so we're back to you. Um, what, what musicals, songs include I Want to Make Magic and Tyrone's Rap? What was the second one? Tyrone's Rap. Family of the Opera. No, I don't think that has a rap. No. <laughs> Rent. No. Rent has a rap though. Uh, the Lion King. <laughs> no. Fame. Okay. Okay. That's dated. <laughs> We're all a little bit dated. But uh, so that's half the fun. I know all the lyrics to all three of those musicals. So no fame but the main <coughs> <coughs> So much for living forever. Uh, uh, Rex, we're back to you. What was the first cat character <laughs> balloon in the Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade? Felix. Correct. Felix. Hey, Lou, when you read the uh, questions, can you kind of aim your mouth toward us instead of the, uh, Okay, all right. I will, I will do a little bit. It will, I'll, help, it will help my poor ancient ears a little bit. Okay. <clears throat> what does Gollum say he likes to eat raw and
Um, what Jency Willett novel bears the publisher's disclaimer? This book has not been nominated for or won the National Book Award. Um, what was the translation? What was the first part of the question? What was the other? What Jency Willett novel? bears the publisher's disclaimer that this book has not been nominated for or won the National Book Award. I have no idea. So would it be something that sounds like another book so that you wouldn't get them confused? I don't know why he would put that disclaimer in there. Well, he needs to at least give it a chance to win. <laughs> well, so what would something change his selling book? Why, why might you need to put that disclaimer in? Because you put the title so close to a winner <laughs> that you have to say, this is not the award for the book. It is the list of books that have won the award. This is not one of them. Okay. The title of the book is Winner of the National Book Award. <laughs> Yeah. Isn't that what you said? But if it says, yeah. oh. if it says picture on the front, you know well, it's not it. said. Oh. They're apparently due to the disclaimer. But then again, they put uh, disclaimers on the long boards that says if you pull too hard, you'll have a heart attack. Well, so. I would be more worried about other injuries from a heart attack. Um. This is going to have to be my last question. Okay. All right. Yeah, it's been education. Which king was crowned in Scotland in 1651? William Conqueror. No. King James the first. No. The only one I know is Charles, but he was 18. A different King Charles. <laughs> you're, 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 you're guessing. You're guessing Charles. Charles. All right. You're you're more correct. Ah! There's a lot of those. Technicality. <laughs> well, there's been three of them now. Yeah. Scotland doesn't have a king. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
1935 world land speed record. World land speed record? Correct. Okay. Is it my turn? Yes. They turn? Correct. Murphy movie premiere party boasted Tibetan dancers. That was, it was the one where he was the African king. Yeah. But I don't have the name of it. Yeah, that, that one was fun to do. All right. The answer is of the golden child. And I don't know what that movie is about, so it's about yeah, to it's about the answer. Thing, I think. All right. Last question, and then we wrap up. What did George Green patent in 1875 that was voted? The second most terrifying thing known to mankind after nuclear warfare in a 2003 poll. Well, say it again. What did George Green patent in 1875? And this invention was voted in a 2003 poll the second most terrifying thing known to mankind after nuclear war. What, whose turn is it? Um, I have forgotten. So whoever wants to answer this, go. <laughs> um, that's a that's a weird question because obviously the nuclear bomb was was um, invented much later. Yes. So yes. Well, the poll was in two thousand three. Okay. Um, the Ouija board. Nope. Most of gas. Nope. A an electric dental drill. All right. So that is us wrapping up. So how many points do Lily each have? I have five. All right. How many do you have? I had six. Okay. So I think our winner is Miss Carolee, who just left. But I will get to her prize. But thank you all thank you. for coming. Well, that was a humbling experience. I must say. Very educational. <laughs> yeah. I certainly didn't know anything about the way.